What's up, my name is Technobo here for Troubleshoot and in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can set up a 1.16 paper server. This video in particular is going to focus on the new release of 1.16.3, but the supplies for all 1.16 versions. So to begin, the first thing we have to do is download the paper server. It's a lot easier than Craft Bucket and Spigot as we can just download the jar itself. All you have to do is head across to the link down in the description below or make your way across to papermc.io slash downloads. Then when you're on this page, simply select paper 1.16.3 and then click the download button at the top point of this list over here. These download buttons below it are obviously for previous versions. If we hover over it, we get a preview of what it actually is. In the bottom left, we can see this top one is 1.16.3, one down is 1.16.2. If we wanted more, we can head across to Legacy and we can download all the versions of paper from here. But anyways, I'll download the latest version, 1.16.3. Then I'll make a folder like somewhere on my desktop and I'll be dragging the jar that we just downloaded into that folder. Opening it up, we see it over here. So let's start by configuring our actual server. Right click and click new followed by text document. Now you should see new text document dot text. I'll be renaming it server dot bat and I'll be removing the dot txt after it. Upon doing that and hitting enter, we'll see a file name change pop up. Simply click yes. If you don't see that and the icon remains the same, at the very top, head across to view and make sure file name extensions is checked. Then we'll right click on server dot bat and then click edit or we'll simply open it with notepad or a similar program. Then inside of here, we'll be copying and pasting some text from the description down below. There we go. At echo off java hyphen xms 4g space hyphen xmx 4g space hyphen jar followed by the name of the actual jar file itself in the same folder as this dot bat. Mine of course is paper191.jar as you can see over here. If your version is different, make sure to change the name over here to match the jar file inside of the server folder. If it has a space in it, simply make sure to surround it in inverted commas as such. Then something that a lot of server hosts do is they'll add a space at the end and they'll enter hyphen no GUI. The server starts up by default with a nifty little GUI that has a RAM usage representation, plays on the server and some more info. Of course, most server hosts will suggest that you have no GUI. So let's get to giving the server some more RAM. Currently, the one that you copied from the description below has a starting amount of RAM of four gigs and a maximum amount of RAM of four gigs. Of course, you can change this to your heart's content. If we open up Task Manager and head across to the Performance tab, followed by Memory, you'll see how much RAM you currently have available in your computer and how much is being used by other programs. Just remember, that programs will take up some RAM, you'll need some for the server itself, some for the game itself, and then of course some headroom for Windows and other programs you're running on your computer. Of course, if you're running just this on a dedicated computer, you should give it as much RAM as possible as the more RAM you give it, the better the server will perform. Because I have a ludicrous amount of RAM, 64 gigs, I can give the server, say, eight gigabytes of RAM, simply by changing the four to an eight and leaving the G next to it. Say that we want to give it a more specific amount of RAM, we can swap out the G for an M, meaning megabytes, and multiply it by a thousand. 8000 M is the same as 8G. So now that we've set up our server.bat, let's simply get to running it. It should eventually say, press any key to continue, and we'll have to accept the EULA. There we go. I'll press any key to continue and open up EULA.txt. I'll simply change false to true, save the file, and close it. Now we can edit server.properties and change our server to act as we like. Of course, something to keep note of is server port over here. Server port 25565 by default is something that you'll need to port forward and allow through your firewall if you want people outside of your local network to connect to your server. Without going into too much details, if you need help port forwarding, there's a bunch of videos linked in the description down below. But anyways, let's close out of server.properties and let's launch up our server. Now it should create a plugins folder for us and start generating the spawn of our world. There we go. The server's up and running. I'm free to join and play, but of course you may want to go ahead and customize some other things in here, such as the paper, spigot, or bucket config files over here, or of course add yourself some plugins, but that's all up to you. Now that we've set up our 1.16.3 server, let's go ahead and join it. I'll go ahead and select 1.16.3 latest release and I'll fire up the game. 
To join your server, simply head across to the multiplayer tab and click direct connection or add. Then we'll be entering either local host or we'll enter 127.0.0.1. This will join you to whatever server is running on your PC. If you change the port from 25565, the default, make sure to add a colon followed by whatever ports you gave it. But I'll leave it as localhost. Then I'll simply click join server and we'll be joining our server much as you'd expect. There we have it. From here, I can opt myself, change my game mode, and we can play as usual on our multiplayer server. Hypothetically, you want someone outside of your local connection to connect, simply make sure that your port forwarded, your firewall is open, and your antivirus isn't stopping the server from running properly. Then simply find out what IP you need to give them for them to join. If they're on the same local network as you, i.e. the same router, simply hold down start and press R. Then type in CMD, enter, and type in ipconfig. We'll be looking for how we connected to the internet. For me, it's ethernet adapter over here. 192.168.1.20 is the address that I give people to connect on my local network to my PC. Hypothetically, I want a friend of mine to join from outside of my local network, making sure that I've port forwarded. All I need to do is Google for what is my IP and then send them the result that Google returns back to me. But without getting into too much details on port forwarding, there are links to that in the description down below. But anyways, once you're done playing, simply close out of your client and have a look at the server over here. Something I like to do to make sure that it saves properly is type in save hyphen all to manually save the world and everything else inside of it. Then I'll type in stop to gently bring the server to a close. Pressing any key to continue, our server is now successfully closed and ready to be played on once again in the future. To start it up again, simply run server.band. Anyways, that's about it for this video. Thanks for watching. My name's been Technobo here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you next time. Ciao.